But without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce um, Marco. Marco is obviously a big contributor to the Joomla project, so give a warm JWC welcome to Marco. Thanks. The, yeah, I'm mic'd up. Good morning. I'm very happy to see that there's such a turnout on a Sunday morning. I know it's been challenging for a number of you. And I actually don't know whether to be angry or happy with my friends that they appeared here in this morning, a few of them only after three hours of sleep, or the fact that they only had three hours of sleep and I missed out on the partying <laughs> before that. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Marco, I'm on production leadership and I'm involved with Joomla X, which is the one but next generation of Joomla. And those, oh, freaking phone, uh, the, those that known me, I have the habit of taking a group picture because it always serves to show your children that there's actually people turning up to listen to me. <laughs> so there's the proof. Now I did message them that they could follow me live on Facebook, but hey ho, who knows if they actually do that. So I'm going to start off with a little tale, a tale of seven jumlers. I didn't, this wasn't orchestrated, but this just happened to be. Uh, there is, was a number of friends that gathered all, already on Monday, GSOC mentors and GSOC students in an Airbnb home. And at one point, we decided to take a trip, recommended by Eve, because he visited that place already and it was great. We should go there, see to the sky gondola adventure. Uh, obviously, getting there wasn't that much of a problem. Oh, well, wasn't it? You'll see the analogy in this trip to the Joomla community, because going up there, we already had some discord in the back of the car. Because, well, pe some people are relaxed and some people are a bit nervous because we were running low on gas. So, are we going to get there? Go, turn around, let's go. Okay, we got over that part. But however, when we finally got to the location, it turned out they shut down for maintenance. Even though Eve was there the day before, <coughs> they shut down. Bummer. We've driven 60 kilometers to get there. So that's not nice. So there was a discussion going on, what to do? Shall we return, do nothing? Well, that's obviously not the Joomla way. Let's find alternatives and talk to the locals, see what we can do. Because it wouldn't, doesn't pay to just stay there and go back after having a soda. So, well, you can guess it's a mountain, so going up should be possible in multiple ways. <coughs> so this guy, the local one of the maintenance, very proud of his town, told me, well, there's some mountain roads, forest roads you can take up there. Now, I don't know whether you saw the vehicle, but we got a very nice rental vehicle, at least until that point. <laughs> Four-wheel drive, allegedly, three-point whatever liter motor. So, well, forest road, what can go wrong? So, <laughs> yeah, we ventured up. So, me in the front, six others in the back. Yeah, that was, uh, there were some parts that were quite challenging. And you got all ready to hear, okay, uh, there was a, like a mixed group dynamics. There was joy and laughter and there was, well, let's say discomfort. And some naysaying. Uh, let's go back. Oh, this is nothing for me. Ach du alter Schwede, let's go back. <laughs> but going up is nice. And then it turned dark. And we still had to go down. So hopefully this works. Mm. Yeah, but this. Listen carefully. Come on, this in German. Yeah, yeah, but this is a bisschen Oh, yeah. this is this is the hard. Oh, and the people are not so hard. I'm going to go to the 
Lieber Rollen. Sei ruhig. Es fehlt nur einer. Lass mal. Mach mal ein Video. Entschuldigung. Es fehlt nur einer. Und ja. Im Nachhinein könntest du alles sagen, aber jetzt braucht ich meine Konzentration. Well, this was kind of a controversial trip down road, and it isn't finished yet. It gets better, and it wasn't planned. But you can hear the nurgling in the back. Uh, and if you understand German, uh, you hear me talking to someone in the back who's backseat driving and saying, okay, there's only one driver, now don't mess with my concentration, I've got to stay on the road. And it's like in the project, some feel out of control, some have the control, and the others have to rely on them. But it's, it was a mixture. Uh, people were still happy in the end. I uh, don't know whether it's the driver or the fact that they got down safely, but they were happy. And all seemed to settle. But we were like 15 kilometers up that freaking mountain road. And we started to smell something. We started to smell of burn. And we, s we started to see smoke. Well, and that's kind of disconcerting when you're seven people in a Jeep in area outside of cell reception. It turned out the brakes were overheating. Whilst we had a very nice four-wheel drive car, it didn't seem to be able to break on the engine, which is kind of crucial if you want to drive downhill the mountain. Because if you continuously have to press your brakes, well, they start to overheat. But then you see the community coming together again. With all this discord, people started to read the manual to see where do we find this engine braking thing, because we want to get down, we, and yeah, we actually don't want to pay a fine on the vehicle. It already took some pretty harsh hits doing doink uh, on boulders. So yeah, uh, I wasn't that happy. So we stopped and we explored other, other possibilities we explored. So we're thinking outside of the box, and hey, there's water there. So that turned out to be the solution. So drinking bottles, water, splash them on the discs, and we were able to continue. Then, at about 10 kilometers from the end, we encountered this guy. We saw him on the way up, riding his dirt bike, but on the way down, he was making these gestures. Well, he got stranded, he ran out of fuel. And again, that's where you see the community jump in, of course, we help him. So we squeeze an eighth person into a seventh person car and continue our way down. Now, this wasn't planned in any way, shape, or form uh, to end up like this, but in hindsight, it seemed to pose some analogies to what we see in the Joomla community, some discord, some uncomfort, uh, the leading part. So, I would just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was a fun thing. So, being down, I asked all of these attendants to give their vision on the future of Joomla. I have a one-liner. So, I'm not going to read them out. All of you, you can read them back later. So, this is Ashan's voice. Well, Eve is... Uh, <coughs> A bit shorter, best is yet to come, so it's easy to read out. Victor is uh, promoting the participation part because, yeah, community, that's what it's all about. Ruchi, or Ruchi Ranga, as his, full, uh, I can't pronounce his uh, surname, that's way too much with much consonants. And so we settled on Ruchi after a few days. Niels, our architect for Joomla X. Nicola, trying to tease you into understanding if you know any of your Latin. I put the translation down there. So, through hardship, through the stars. And that's my quote. 
the future is bright. However, the, law, the, road, the road is long and winding. Just wanted to say, it's, uh, to me, this project is not like all kumbaya. It's all great. I think we have a great future, but it will not be without obstacles. So I got their quotes. So I'd like to challenge you to tweet your quote or view on the future of Joomla. Let all the other ones know what your outlook is for Joomla, or you, how you perceive it. Well, a tweet is by definition limited in the number of characters, so it should not be that difficult. So please, please participate. So, and then. That's all, folks. That was supposed to be a bit louder and was meant to wake you up because unfortunately for you, it's not the end of the presentation. <laughs> We're all only 30% in, so I think I better hurry up. It's about the future of Joomla and I'm gonna take you down the road a bit with some global stuff that already came to mention in the road trip. And then, of course, we will have the highly anticipated functionalities. What are we? What you're going to get? Well, Joomla is. Uh, well, the, it's a bit confusing at the moment. We've got Joomla 3, you're all familiar with. And we are now Joomla 4. But we already talked about Joomla 4 last year. <coughs> And now we, we hear something about Joomla X. Yeah, uh, life sucks, and then you get this. We have a system called semantic versioning in indicating what version we are on, and for reasons, uh, technically and uh, quality-wise, we needed to do some upgrading uh, on PHP and MySQL the database stuff, I'll get into that, and that mandated that that software version will be called Joomla 4. Then we have the stuff that we want to do in the future to make a really, really uh, nice CMS, and I hope and believe that we will continue to have a Joomla X, which will always be targeting at the one but next generation of technology UX and what have you not to keep ahead of the game. And for the future, uh, yeah, it's a bit corny, but we rely on the community uh, because you, the community, make the future of Joomla. Nothing with this is possible. And there's a number of people involved already, but life will happen to them. They'll have children, get into a relationship, don't have the time anymore to spend on the project, so we need continuous contribution in these areas. And even though I'm from PLT, uh, we're not oblivious to the fact that a project and a release is more than a piece of code. It's marketing, it's documentation, it's all these kinds of things that make it possible for everybody to contribute. So the community is, in my opinion, both the strength and the Achilles heel of the organization of Joomla. The strength because all of you can contribute and the Achilles heel because it's volunteers work and life will happen and there's no boss that can say you shall work or you not, will not get paid. So in that sense, I also ask for some yeah, leniency if we don't meet our milestones. Because it, it's, it's darn difficult uh, to do everything in your spare time. And there's a number of people that put in a lot. So, yeah, we have to respect those. Another big thing for me in the future of Joomla that will make it happen better is the structure change that is now finalizing. So if you're in a uh, group, please vote. I think it will make Joomla stronger, although, and being very frank, I'm also a bit concerned because of the geopolitics I've seen 
and I'm not going to ask for a vote on that, but Brexit and president-elect of the United States, <laughs> it's all democratic, but it doesn't make me happy, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that would be something, <laughs> if only. No, but I hope that we have a community that has a sensible view on electing their leaders based on values and stuff that we can accomplish together and not just on some rhetoric or social cloud. Uh, another part, oh, what's that? Oh. I think it's very important is a certification going forward, and we'll have more of that. It's, it's a sign of professionalization of the organization. And you can go out there and show, and it's more than a piece of paper, because it's darn hard to pass it. And it's been told, uh, said before by Sarah, and those that are going to take partake in the certification, I wish the best of luck, and truly hope that you have prepared, because I've seen a number of people uh, that were really disappointed afterwards. Oh, darn, I've been doing administration for a long time, but yeah, they, it, it was harder than I thought. Anyhow, no further ado, we'll go to the part that you probably all have been waiting for, that's the gifts part. What are you gonna get, what can you expect from Joomla? So here we go, it's a long list of things to come. Coming from Joomla 3.7, uh, we will get a new router. Well, that's the thing that builds the URL in, uh, on top, and we will get cleaner URLs. So the item ID, well, personally, I'm not that much worried about it, but people don't seem to like that, which indicates a menu item, so that's gone. Uh, and you can actually, well, it should be fairly uh, safe to move over. A bit of caution is advised when you try that because, yeah, there's a small chance that a number of your extensions will not be fully compliant. But, yeah, the advantages are very, very interesting. A next hot one is the add articles with menu links. Uh, who has been frustrated by creating an article and then having to go back to the menu and <coughs> find the article again and try and explain that to a newbie. Uh, to us, it's probably already, well, it's in our DNA. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> but a newbie doesn't understand it anyway. So this will be the option where you can create your article and your menu item in one go. Also in 3.7, uh, we'll have some refresh of the admin template uh, so that it at least looks contemporary. Uh, so it's going to be flattened out more. Uh, there's going to be a few changes, but no really <coughs> earth-shaking ones. And the timeline. I know you're going to ask that, so I just put it in the slide. <laughs> it's tentatively. All of the time information in here is tentative. So you're welcome to bitch and moan in some time but I'm just gonna ignore you if we don't meet it. <laughs> uh, so the 3.7 will come out in uh, probably February 2017 due to the security stuff that we had and there's some more to come. Highly anticipated also is fields uh, and it has been announced that it was merged but yeah, we will have to uh, do some quality checks, security checks so merging doesn't mean that it's finished for delivery. And we just don't know whether it will make it to uh, 3.7 or 3.8. Those interested, I have a talk on fields this afternoon, but it allows you to build like a mini CCK for your uh, website, adding attributes to images, uh, modules, and or your own components. Then there's some miscellaneous stuff going in so that we have now J layouts for all form fields. Uh, we have a new calendar manager and there's some, other m some more, but that's more for the development side. For 3.8, we're not envisioning that for 3.7. We are looking at the new media manager. 
uh, that has been due for an overhaul for a long time. Uh, we will uh, intend uh, to adhere to the principle for design for change, meaning that everything's based on plugins. You can add in new content types, uh, like for SVGs or anything else that might come along. And we'll have a plugin-based uh, workflow system where you can di uh, define steps for your workflow, rotating images, resizing them, displaying them in multiple resolutions using the picture tag. That's all gonna be an awesome addition. And uh, moreover, all the information is gonna be stored in the database using categories so you can rely on attributes that you're used from articles like tags. It will be multilingual uh, so you can translate your tags. Uh, you could even have an Im uh, image of a car for your UK website with the steering wheel on the right and for the US with the steering wheel on the left. Well, it's possible, so why not offer it? The timeline. So we hope to uh, offer 3.8 uh, by June next, uh, next year. We have to have some space between the releases. Then the next big one will be Joomla 4 because we want to be released. Uh, we are now shackled uh, to PHP version. That's no longer supported. It had security issues. Um, it's in no way sexy to developers because it enforces some rules, or I must better say it doesn't offer some options to do stuff in a much more clever way. Um, and at the same time, uh, yeah, we want to get rid of some junk. Over the time, 3.x has been the longest stable release, but over time, we have accumulated a lot of junk. And every piece of code that's not used is a security risk. Every time you look at it, you think, okay, do I need to do something with that? Um, and in technical terms, that's called deprecated code. And it's been marked as such for ages. Uh, so developers could and should know that it's gonna go away but, well, as is the case, uh, we typically worry about something where that already happened. Um, so we're trying to make it uh, known much in advance. Please move ahead. There's lots of things that you can do already in your existing code by addressing the deprecation so that once we get to Joomla 4, you can leapfrog into it without encountering too much problems. We will have better templating uh, we will have a Bootstrap 4 template, probably, because Bootstrap 4 is now already in alpha, and by the time we get out, we expect it to be uh, uh, yeah, feature complete and officially released. We will be AA accessible, at least from the core template, so the accessibility, uh, which is often asked by uh, governmental organizations and stuff, and we are dearly lacking at the moment, should then be in from ground up. We'll have a cleaned up dashboard in the back end. We'll have improvements for SEO. And one thing I personally like, we will have installable overrides for stuff. So whilst we now can install for modules, for plugins, for components, we will be able to install for an override for a module so that you can share your work more easily. Uh, excited about that. I'll reiterate here that we plan to do a one-click upgrade for core. We have learned from the past that we don't want to have uh, these big breaks in functionality going from one seven to two, and which caused a lot of people headaches. Uh, now, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs, so there will be some stuff to be considered, but yeah, we really try to limit that. Also, by, by ensuring that we have an overlap in functionality. So as an example, we can take the media manager. You've seen the slide of the media manager in the 3.x uh, realm uh, already, uh, but it's here also. Now, I told you th uh, the media manager will use a database uh, system. So if people can get used to that in the 3.x range, then the migration to four will be easier. 
Now, we will be adding functionality because the reason that there is a split is partially also technical. We want to offer uh, the ability to store your images and your media in the cloud, in anything, in a Dropbox, in an Amazon Web Service container, you name it, should be possible. Uh, as we have learned from the past, uh, well, there's libraries for helping us with that. Uh, but you may or may not be aware, but in the past we adopted some general technology like Bootstrap 2 and I tweaked it a little bit because it didn't meet, meet our expectations and we put it in and then it became that ball and chain because it was very hard to maintain and nobody really liked it. So, yeah, whilst it might be technically possible, to do this stuff in 3.7, we're just not gonna do it. We're not gonna deal with the hardship. If you want that, just wait for four, where we can rely on the people that make their living out of supporting something in the cloud and are on top of all security issues. Let them deal with it. We'll just take it in and be happy with it. Technically speaking, with the cleanup, we'll get a service layer and that's more catered to the developers. Uh, they will have a better in, uh, interfacing, which is more defined, more consistent, uh, and which will help carry over extensions to next versions and access core functionality. That was the internal view. We also have the external view, where we finally uh, want to introduce an hypermedia API. Uh, that's a mouthful also known as a RESTful interface. That might resonate a bit more. Uh, but basically for you as uh, developers and or end users, it means that you can access your website in more ways than just via your browser. You could create an app that just draws on the information in your website and display it in a, a different way. It opens the way to what Kevin John said yesterday, that we can open it up to a different view to the end user, uh, where it's not about UX. It just delivers a blob of data, and you just have to make sure that you are the first entry in Google for that. And then you're all set. So, and if you're gonna hit on somebody for that, hit on George Wilson. Uh, his claim is that uh, we are going to be in alpha or early beta for this Joomla 4 uh, functionality by Jane Beyond next year in Krakow. Uh, yeah, it's in Krakow, I think. Yeah. So you're very welcome to join that. It's a great conference. It's, yeah, it's more, way more techy than this one, but very well worth visiting. Okay, we've visited three. That's the immediate future. Uh, the four series, which is the near future. And then we're gonna leapfrog to the Joomla X constellation. And lazy as I am, I use these, reuse these slides. But from the get-go, we have the intention just not to focus on one part of a project uh, very explicitly. So, we still want to ensure the one-click upgrade, so put that in. And so one pillar is the architecture. It should show a bit that there's a light blue circle behind the green thingy. Architecture has to be okay. If you build a house, you have to have a big enough plot. To build your house, you have to have a strong enough foundation. And when certain preconditions are met, you can engage other people to come in and do the masoning and the tiling and whatever to actually build that house. And if that's gonna be a one-story house or a two-story house, if you have the correct uh, preconditions, that's all possible. The next one is the user experience. We really, really want to do something about that and make that the best one possible because that's what our end users and you have to deal with in the end. Obviously, we have to spread the word, create awareness, uh, awareness for people contributing and awareness for people 
anticipating this and knowing where we're going. So spread the word in the Make It Happen session yesterday. Uh, we were already lucky enough to have people sign up to say, okay, I want to help with marketing. Uh, I'm good at designing. Uh, I can help with documentation, but that can never be enough. So we're going to probably slowly ramp up starting January. So please feel free to hit me up and uh, yeah, participate. Obviously, marketing, you also have education. We have to educate our developers, and that's not meant in a, uh, in a negative way, but we have to make them aware of what's coming to try and make them anticipate as much as possible uh, on the changes. Because if we wait until it's done, it's not going to happen. So the motto for anything to do with Joomla X is design for change. We really, really want to get to a point where we do not need to worry that much anymore about major changes in functionality, backward compatibility breaks. We want to offer continuity and the possibility to add to that, to add new functionality that will make our lives easier. So we're gonna highlight some of the features that we foresee. One thing is content independent rendering. Yeah, the, again, a mouthful. Uh, but to try and make it a bit easier, we are now locked into Bootstrap 2. Uh, Joomla 4 will offer the opportunity to have more frameworks upon installation. In, uh, but internally, Joomla will still think in terms of HTML. Uh, in some framework, be it Zurb or Foundation or Bootstrap, still thinks internally about HTML, which is wrong in principle, because who knows what output we're going to get next year or the year after. Uh, Joomla, 4, uh, Joomla X aims at uh, describing the content internally in agnostic terms, as in not being aware of the details of how it's rendered. So that translates in that you could have a Bootstrap 4 renderer or a Bootstrap 5, or ZERP, or Foundation. Well, that's kind of what's going into 4 already. But at the same time, you could do rendering of EPUBs, or whatever format comes along next year, the Siri output format, I have no clue. But by definition, we are prepared for that, because internally, we are agnostic about the output. All of that functionality is uh, positioned in a single piece of layering of software. The horizon, horizontal, it's another key word that we uh, tend to use in uh, Joomla X. I'll spare you the technical details. If you want to know about them, please ask me, ask Niels, uh, project. But in the end, that means that we take away the burden of implementing stuff from extensions, which we call horizontals, uh, for, uh, verticals, sorry, and put them in what we call horizontals. It's functionality that can be shared across components. So there's one horizontal that's responsible for ACL. There's a horizontal that's responsible for multilingual. And the tricky part for developers will be that they all have to strip out all the code that they had put in before to support that, because they're gonna get that functionality or any functionality of a horizontal for free. Now that has some implications in terms of, okay, it's gonna make our world more secure, uh, because we in core can take care of a lot of the handling and we don't need to uh, relinquish that control to the developer. It's more easy for the developer because he doesn't have to worry. If we decide that we want to have a new ACL system, we can put that on, not break backward compatibility, and people can start using that if they choose so. The old one can still be loaded if you want to, but hey-ho, we'll probably will add something because it's more easy. So in the end, it's less worry for you 
because decoupling that will mean that if there's a new upgrade, you don't have to worry that much that your ex the ex developer of your favorite extension is not going to follow. He's not going to put in multilingual or the new ACL or whatever, because he's going to get it anyway. Doesn't have to do anything about that. Less worry. I like that. Uh, we will change the way that we interact with databases. Again, it's a bit technical, but it will allow us to scale better, also for corporate applications. We will have more options to go to different types of databases. Uh, so yeah, now we all know about MySQL, but there's other types of databases uh, um, very strong in coming, and we'd like to be able to support that. For Joomla X, everything will be components. I guess you all, and I hope you all are familiar with the current concept uh, on a, of a page, you have one content area. That's where you display your articles, your blogs, your external components of, of the shop, and then you can position some modules around that. Uh, Joomla X is going to change that in the terms that you are no longer limited to one type of content on a page. This will also kind of blur the con concept of modules because what's a module, what's a, what's a component? So, but it would mean that you could have uh, really com content on the same page with uh, a shop. Or, I don't know, there's way, way much options that will uh, be possible and will allow us to break free of that concept. But yeah, I, I hear you think, uh, at least I think I hear you think, or do I? Yeah. Um, that's going to be hard to manage because how I'm going to set that in. And that brings me to the final and uh, hot topic we've been seeing sprouting up everywhere already, whilst we thought, already thought about this years back. And that's a page builder, a graphical tool to allow you to compose your page, drag and drop, pull in this type of content, that kind, mix and match on your page. Now you can say, okay, that's already around. Yes and no. If you look at the, uh, uh, there are solutions out there that are compatible or fit in the 3.x architecture but they have the limitations in the sense that they, uh, because 3.x isn't built for using that, that basically they cram everything of your page in the content area and then display it, which uh, uh, that's at least one approach, which makes it very difficult to either migrate from a current setup, which has modules and articles and what have you not to that setup, or once you've chosen that template to migrate away from that to another one which has another page builder which has a, another format. Uh, we intend to have the page builder on really on the page level and not in the content level so that you can actually switch templates, do stuff and the way it's supposed to be. Now that looks a pie in the sky and to some extent it is. And we had numerous discussions in PLT, so in terms of full disclosure, um, there were people saying, yeah, it's, gonna work. it's not gonna work, you're using too advanced technology, don't see that happen. So in PLT we discussed to have a, what was ultimate, it was triggered by Chris Davenport, so that's why it's a CDMH, a Chris Davenport happiness milestone. Uh, a bit of a fun twist to a serious concept where we predefined, okay, let's give you a proof of concept of the basics, the, the technical internals, uh, the hypermedia API, the command bus, all technical stuff that you don't really need to worry about but is fundamental to our architecture. And whilst uh, missing the actual date, I think we succeeded in uh, getting there. 
uh, and we have shown, uh, and we are now at the point of starting to uh, review process where we can discuss this on a functional level. Now what you see here, oh, uh, that's actually a website, a basic website, built with the Joomla X proof of concept. It's built with page uh, elements, with a page builder. Well, the page builder being the human, in our case, uh, David Neukirchen, who did a lot of work uh, recent days to <coughs> put it together. So we're lacking a GUI builder at this point in time, but these are uh, content agnostic elements. So you can start looking at that and you will see our unique features, uh, the page builder being framework agnostic, having stronger security, being state of the art. I didn't really mention that, but we are in a world where there's lots of options of people in open source to contribute uh, because there's a lot of sexy uh, frameworks out there that run state of the art. And typically if you're enthusiastic and young, you want to use state-of-the-art. You don't want to use a clay tablet to write your messages uh, to your next-door neighbor. Uh, it's a bit exaggerated, but th that's what Joomla is now. So we want to have the opportunity to introduce new technical concepts that are really going to appeal to the next generation of developers and will draw in people anymore. And yes, it will scare away people that are used to the old ways. But I hope they take that as an opportunity to participate and learn about the new ways. Uh, we had kind of the same discussion with uh, introducing the MVC, the model view controller concept, maybe too technical. People thought, okay, our developers are never gonna get that. I think they're more intelligent than we might give them credit for. So please, yeah, be sure to uh, let me see if I can get back to my presentation. Yay. So you can check it out yourself on the GitHub, GitHub repository. Uh, it's a bit tricky at the moment to get it started, but there's a continuous, <laughs> there, there, there's a continuous ongoing effort to make that more easy. So then you can see what's happening there. We're planning, uh, we're building all our documentation into that repo so that once you get it, you can look at it all at once. We're building on the technical stuff now, but we also want to build on user experience and we have some great people already wanting to contribute to that because, well, I consider myself a bit of a techie guy. We also uh, always have trouble in conveying a message to, I'd say, normal people because we tend to go into the technical details too much, which I hope we didn't do that this time. So I put a timeline on that for 218 plus, just don't know, it will take a significant amount of time. But anyhow, I thank you very much for enduring me. <laughs> <laughs>